you have to be able to, to communicate well and grab people from both sides of the aisle and knock them together and say, hey, let's get some stuff done. This one got me because, you know, when I think of, of crypto policies and regulation, the first name that comes to my mind is, is Maxine Waters. <laughs> uh, she is the chair of the House Financial Service Committee and has reached out to regulators. For, former chair. Okay. When the Democrats held power. She's now the ranking member, but Patrick McHen McHenry on, is, is now the current chair. Okay. The former chair of the House Financial Services Committee uh, and has reached out to regulators in a bid to pass a crypto-focused bill to provide a pathway for U.S.-based digital asset exchanges to register with the SEC. Waters sent a letter to SEC uh, Gensler, uh, SEC Chancellor, oh, Chancellor, Chairman sure. Gensler, asking for clarity on how the digital asset market structure proposal would affect the SEC's existing authorities. A similar letter was sent to Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, requesting an explanation on the bill's impact on the Treasury Department. The digital asset market structure proposal, co-signed by Representative Patrick McHenry and Glenn Thompson, is this year's most significant crypto oversight proposal in Congress. The draft legislation aims to to approve digital securities, commodities, and stablecoins for trading while providing guidelines for distinguishing crypto-based security from a commodity. What does that mean? That, so it's a good question. I met with Congressman French Hill a couple days ago when he was here in Dallas. Um, he is the chair of the S Digital Asset Subcommittee of Financial Services Committee, which Patrick McHenry chairs. Um, and I re I've got a lot on this, but... Uh, I so, so let me just dive in. We've th there are two components to this bill. One is the market structure piece, and that is a combination of regulatory efforts from the CFTC, which is overseen by the Ag Committee, and the uh, SEC, which is overseen by the Financial Services Committee. And so that market structure would allow for the the um, decentralized uh, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin to be considered a commodity and other assets that are newer uh, and not yet decentralized to stay in that securities camp, and they understand they have to be registered as a security. Uh, but there is a potential that they could de decentralize sufficiently to be moved over to the commodities camp. And then you've got the stablecoin legislation, which is a little bit more straightforward. Uh, stablecoins are uh, a little bit more bipartisan, so uh, we expect that um, Representative Maxine Waters to be sort of that linchpin uh, in that committee. Most of the Democrats on the committee will um, will follow her lead, and so she's she signaled some uh, interest in the stablecoin bill. To be sure, we have a little bit of work to do on the market structure bill. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, as that relates to Texas, there's there's a myriad of of implications. Obviously, we want the Texas delegation to support it. There's three. Uh, three Texas congressmen and congresswomen on the Financial Services Committee. Uh, you've got Congressman Pete Sessions from Central Texas, Congressman Al Green from the Houston area, and uh, Congresswoman Sylvia Garcia from uh, South Texas. So we're working on all three of them um, to to ensure that they support the legislation. And um, yeah, it, it it's going to take a while, though. It's going to take you know, it may pass the House in the next couple of months, but to get that through the Senate and Sherrod Brown, the, the chairman of the Senate Banking Committee, a year plus. So where do you think all this is coming from? Do you think this is because of like the the fallout from like FTX? And because it seems like more and more and maybe it's just, again, the echo chamber, but more and more this is this type of stuff is getting more press, more political uh, uh, eyeballs and in. Is it because it's people are seeing it and more awareness, yeah. so therefore they have to get involved? Because I was, again, thinking like Maxine Waters, Democrat, like maybe it's just because I live in Texas, but I just don't see, I don't, I don't see how that, how they, they, they mesh or it just, it was interesting to me, to me that she was jumping in on this, uh, this conversation. Yeah, it really is. And, and she is, she's a savvy operator, one of the oldest um, elected officials in the legislature, so she's been there a long time, mm -hmm. and her staff knows, uh, you know, the lay of the land up there. I, I think we are in for a long haul at the federal level. We're going to have to continue to rely on um, the current patchwork of um, legislation for the next 24 months, mm -hmm. right? 
Um, so what does that mean? Let's support this bill. Let's support Congressman McHenry. Let's you know push our Demo- you know, people on the Democratic side of the aisle to support Maxine Waters to get her over the edge on these market structure bills. But in the meantime, um, we've got what we need to build in Texas. You know, I saw the, the comment from BTC Patriot over, uh, earlier on the on the YouTube uh, chat that was talking about how do we get Texas to do what El Salvador did. Well, there's a lot of things we can do without Congress. The federal system in the U.S. is a beautiful um, uh, system. And so what he is asking is how can we be more like El Salvador? We can't uh, make Bitcoin a, a currency uh, in Texas we like El Salvador did. But what we can do, and this is an idea that I'll, I'll give credit to, to somebody else. It's not my idea. I'm not going to blast his name out there and dox him. But it's my idea. Uh, OK, we'll give it to you then. So there is an idea that we're working on to establish a trust. Uh, and this trust would then hold Bitcoin on behalf of the state of Texas. The state of Texas is the beneficiary of the trust. And so the attorneys, when they draft the trust, would list the treasurer or the rainy day fund of the state of Texas as the beneficiary of the trust. And so that Bitcoin is stored in hardware, you know, in cold storage within the trust uh, custody. And then at which point the state of Texas is willing to take custody of those assets, um, then the trust would uh, bequeath, to use a legal term, if mm-hmm. you will, give the, the funds to the state of Texas. And then Bitcoin would have, excuse me, Texas would have Bitcoin on the balance sheet. So I saw that question come in from BTC Patriot. It applied to what we were talking about, and I wanted to weave it in. I, I, I would like to also weave in, to use those words, that there's a good opportunity to, to say that, you know, the TBC is a nonpartisan group. Yeah. You know, uh, and, and often in Texas, because we're in Texas and because Texas is so red, there's a there's a tendency just to assume the TBC is 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 all red Republican whatever. Um, do, do you want to just spend a couple seconds to talk about the not why it's important to be nonpartisan as the as a TBC? Yeah, it is. I mean, what we have more support from uh, Republicans and Democrats in Texas at the moment, but it's kind of unique. We've got we've got support from uh, business friendly Republicans, Republicans that are innovative that uh, want to see Texas remain a, a state for um, uh, growing business climate. The microchip was developed and in, in, invented in Texas at Texas Instruments. It was commercialized in California. We do not want to see the commercialization of digital assets, Bitcoin, Bitcoin mining, all these other things to take place outside of Texas, outside of the U.S. because of a poor regulatory climate. Uh, so we are leaning on our Republican allies. Um, we are also working to bring some moderate Democrats into the fold, and we have several. Uh, Representative Busey is an innovative Democrat. I wouldn't say he, yeah, he, he's just a, he's a free thinker, critical thinker, and he's about innovation. He's about the, the well-being of his constituents. We've got Senator Royce West here in the Dallas area, Senator Nathan Johnson. Um, there's, there's a handful of state reps and state senators who are Democrats who are also supportive. So our loudest critics in Texas are not the Democrats. Our loudest critics are um, Republicans that don't understand this technology yet. So mm-hmm. that is the unique nature that we're seeing. Um, and it's it's different than other states, but um, you have to be able to, to communicate well and grab people from both sides of the aisle and knock them together and say, hey, well, let's get some stuff done. And I think that's a major value proposition of the TBC is its ability to educate policymakers. So if you are connected to somebody in your county rep or or, or whoever in, in your municipality or or Congress or a representative or anything, and you need to educate them, contact Lee, the TBC, and I'm sure we can get somebody out there to, to, to educate. We'll get people, we'll get resources. You know, we, we walk around the halls of the legislature all the time. Um, and um, yeah, we'll, we're happy to provide you support. Hey, it's Amy. Click over here to subscribe, click over here for more content, and we'll see you next time.